Everyone, how are we today? Good. Can I hear a little bit? Come on. Come on. How are we today? Thank you. Are you excited to learn? Yes. How many of you have heard of Google before? <laughs> okay, good. So I'm not alone. Now today, what we're going to be talking about is getting found on Google Search and Maps. So you've obviously heard of Google. How many of you have used Google Search or Google Maps before? Show of hands. I'm going to make this interactive because I don't want you to fall asleep. And anybody, please just grab coffee and come to you. Now, um, a couple house rules. As far as I know, the closest restroom is through that door to the left and down to the right. Is that correct? Right around this corner, off this okay. corner, right around this corner. Don't listen. I'm not a navigator. I'm a now, can all of you turn your phones on silent, please, just so that there's no interruptions? Okay. And lastly, if you're taking notes, that's great. We're also going to be sending out the slides. And I have a URL that I'm going to share with you that has the slides right on it, so don't feel like you have to take meticulous notes. But what I recommend is take down the slide number if you have questions, and we'll do the questions at the end. Okay? Does that sound good? Mm -hmm. Okay, so how many of you have a small business? I know, right? This kind of <laughs> setup is like a squish. Um, how many of you are a women-owned business? I love it. Any veteran-owned businesses? Yes? Thank you very much for your service, sir. So today what we're going to be talking about is getting your businesses found on search maps. And I don't know what just happened. That's my MacBook. Thank God I don't have anything really bad on there. <laughs> so what we're talking about is this idea of micro moments. The first note I want you to take down is this word micro moments. Okay? So when I'm talking to you, it could be, you know, with a hyphen, it could be a single word, whatever you want. Micro moments. Micro moments is a term that was coined by Google. And the leadership at Google turned, uh, turned this, or coined this term because what it is is a moment where you need to know, go, do, or buy. So again, a micro moment is a moment where you need to know, go, do, or buy. So how many of you travel from, you know, outside five, ten miles to get here today? Did any of you stop for coffee? Yeah? That's a micro moment, right? You're looking for a place to go get coffee. Uh, a great example is when you use your phone. So I live down on the South Shore. Excuse me, I'm sorry. But <laughs> next to Foxborough. And we, my wife was giving my daughter a bath. And all of a sudden, I'm in the kitchen. I'm doing some work. And I just hear drip, drip. Drip, 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 drip. You know what's coming, don't mm -hmm. you? <laughs> All of a sudden, the heavens open up in my kitchen, and I have a monsoon. Okay, so now I'm facing Niagara Falls. Now, it is Sunday night at 8.30. Who am I going to call? Not the Ghostbusters. I'm going to pick up my phone, and I'm going to look for a plumber near me open now. Right? And so I find a 24-hour plumber in my town that has good reviews. How many of you look at reviews? Um, and I called, thank goodness, he picked up the phone, he was over there in 15 minutes, I've never been happier to pay 250 bucks, right? He fixed it, but that's a micro moment. I needed to know someone that was open, that had good service, and that I could buy their service. Make sense? So that's a micro moment. So as we're going through today, I want you to continue thinking about micro moments. It's going to be a constant theme, okay? Oh, there I am. So, I'm a speaker at Grow with Google, you get it from the shirt, I would hope. I'm also, I have a marketing company, but the big thing is I have a YouTube channel, and so that's biggerbetter.biz. If you're writing down notes, it's www.biggerbetter.biz. And the YouTube channel I actually created, it was a, a child city, because traveling around the country, you know, here we are in the North Shore, but then I'm going to go to Missouri next week and Dallas, Texas. Guess what? doesn't matter where you are. Business owners have the same questions. So one of the best practices in marketing is to answer those frequently asked questions. What I did is I created a YouTube channel to do just that. So you can go to biggerbetter.biz, or if you want the slides from today, and there's a link to biggerbetter.biz, briankaplan.com slash getfound, one word. So it's briankaplan.com slash getfound. And we'll make sure we send you a link as well. Is that okay, Leslie? Okay. So again, briankaplan.com slash getfound, you'll have the slides there, you'll have a link to the YouTube channel as well. Everybody good on that? Okay. 
Today, I'm going to talk to you about getting your business found on Google. And specifically, we're talking about Google My Business. How many of you have a Google My Business profile? How many of you have heard of Google My Business, but you're still kind of like, I don't know what it is? A few. And how many of you have no idea what I'm talking about? <laughs> Thank you for being honest. You know, that's why I love Massachusetts, right? We're, we're honest. I'll tell you, down in the South, no one raises their hands. <laughs> you heard of Google? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. So get your business off online for free with Google My Business. We're going to take a tour of it. And then do any of you not have a website? Are you just starting up and you don't have a website yet? Okay. So lucky you, you have a whole section to yourself where I'm going to show you how you can create a website through Google My Business. It's not very hard and it doesn't take up too much time. Don't worry. Now, the big thing here, and any of you that are working with a marketing company, one of the things that they should tell you right away is in digital marketing, consistency is key, right? Mm -hmm. The big thing is we do not want to disrupt our customers, our leads, our prospects. If you disrupt them, what you do is you confuse them. As I say, if you confuse them, you lose them. It's so much easier for us to open up a new tab and do a Google search for something else, right? If you alienate me in any way in my digital experience, you, you can agree with this, right? running a marketing company, then guess what? I'm out the door. I'm somewhere else. I'm picking up the phone. I'm looking for something. You just lost me. So you don't want to alienate. So the big thing here is we want to have a consistent experience. With Google My Business, that's what you get. So you guys have seen this before, right? When you're searching for something. Mm -hmm. And how many of you search on maps? How many of you are vid visual searchers? So you look for something on Google Maps. You look how close it is to you. How many of you do search? Google search, so you go to google.com and type it in. Well, no matter where you search, whether it's on Maps or it's on the Google Search Console, you're gonna have a seamless experience. That's really key, it's critical for Google My Business. And you can see here, this is how the visual aspect of it works on Google Maps, the same thing. Now in this case, we're not in Honolulu, it would be nice, but here's all of the different cookie companies, the same company, but different locations, and we can see their information. And you're connected across all devices. So the big thing here, no matter if I'm on a mobile phone, a tablet, or a desktop or laptop computer, I'm getting the same information. Now that's key because in that micro moment, someone is deciding to buy a product or service of yours in a split second. They need that information delivered to them very consistently and cleanly. Does that make sense? So that's what we're doing here. That's why this is so important. So, I'm gonna, I don't know if this sound's gonna work. We're gonna try this. You'll have to excuse me while I, let's see if this works for us. My name is Amy Hahn, I'm the fourth generation of Faisley Seafood here at Baltimore. We're one of the oldest seafood companies in the country. Not many places can say that they've been in a family for 126 years. Bill and Nancy are my parents. My mom is the queen of crab cakes. We make anywhere from 1,000 to 1,500 crab cakes a day out of the best ingredients I could possibly get. It's nice to have some place that you can go. It's friendly, and there's a lot of love. This is my son, Will. Fifth generation of faith. When people search for us, it's important for them to be able to find us. And Google's the perfect place to do that. It's neat that you can see how many people hit you on a certain day. Having that information allows us to be able to say, you know, look, we may have a crowd. And that's, that's huge. Right now, it's oyster season. We have a wonderful oyster stew. We have wonderful fried oysters. We have this beautiful roll bar. Google can help us tell our customers what's in season. It's key to our survival. Knowing that Faisley's will still be here warms my heart. It's not a dunce pad. It's a crab pad. <laughs> 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 okay. So what I just showed you was five generation business that's in Maryland. I actually got to meet them. They are wonderful. Like he still wears that hat. <laughs> he still does. That that was filmed a couple of years ago. 
but the Fadleys are they're an amazing family because what they've done is they have adopted technology as it's come out. And especially with Will, who's still there, mind you, he's really running the charge now. He's leading the charge. So they're using all these different tools, these features that are made available to them through Google My Business, and it's free. So the big thing that I want you to note here, everything that I'm showing you today is free. There's no hidden agenda here. There's no ads that you have to buy. This all comes as long as you have a Google account. Do all of you have a Google account? Okay, so that doesn't mean that you have to have Gmail and be using Gmail, but you can go to google.com slash accounts to create a Google account. And once you have one, you have keys to the kingdom. So let me show you a little bit more about Google My Business. Now the first thing we would do, and this is how we're going to create a Google My Business profile. So if any of you already have one, that's fine. If you're on your computer and you try to follow along, no problem, but I don't go back, okay, just so you know. So the first thing you would do is you would go to gybo.com, G-Y-B-O, which stands for Get Your Business Online. So it's gybo.com forward slash business. Once you go to gybo.com, you're going slash business, you're going to see right here at the bottom right, enter your business name. If your business is already in the Google system and you already have a Google My Business profile, it will show up in a drop down. If it doesn't, then you can create a new business. So you can add your business to the database. Okay, so let's pretend that we've typed it in. Now you would see one of three screens. The first screen, you'll see a green check mark. It says, great work, your business listing is complete. This means that not only have you created a Google My Business profile, but you also got that postcard to verify it. Any of you have gotten the postcard before? So you know what I'm talking about. So what we do is usually we send out a postcard that takes anywhere from five to seven days. It's so one of those things like when you were a little kid and you'd order a magazine or something and then you're waiting for it to come. You know, you're looking in the mailbox, you're like, did I get it, did I get it? I get calls all the time from people, from clients that are setting up a Google My Business profile saying, did I get the code yet? I'm like, you're, you're the one with the mail, I don't have the code. We have to send it to your place of business. So usually this means that you've got the card, you typed in a little code that we give you and you're off to the races. You have a verified profile. You can use all the tools and features I'm about to show you. This middle one with a question mark, this means, hey, you exist in the system, you have a Google My Business profile, but you haven't verified it yet. So you can't use all the tools. This one means, uh-oh, it's time to get started. No matter what, you'll see one of these three screens and then you move forward. So let's pretend, in this case, that we have the uh-oh screen. First thing it's gonna do is make you log into your google.com account. So google.com slash accounts, we cover that. Then you're going to type in your business name. Make sure when you're typing in your business name, you use title case. Are you guys familiar with title case? The first letter of each word is a capital letter. Very small thing. It's minutia, but this is where consumer psychology comes in. Aesthetics come into play. So if you're not taking the time to capitalize each letter because the name of your business is a proper noun, guess what? They're thinking you're not taking the time to give them a customer experience. It really plays into that. And I've seen businesses that have all caps, do not do all caps, and don't do all lowercase. You want to use title case. Okay? So you'll type in your business name. Hmm. Then you'll pop in your address. Now, how many of you have a home-based business? And keep your hands up if you don't want me to get directions to your home-based business. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so before I started presenting for Google, I didn't know that you could do this. And my home-based business, I was showing my address. And guess what? When I was on the road for Cost and Contact, people were getting directions to my house. And it was showing a street view of my house. And I'm sure people were going to Zillow and looking up how much my house was worth. <laughs> right? So, so what you can do is right here, this checkbox, I deliver goods and services to my customers. That means that you're a service-based business. You have a service radius. Okay? Now, if you want to hide your address, Hide my address. It's not a store. So in this case, where I live in Sharon, Mass, it would just say Brian Capital Marketing, Sharon, Massachusetts. It wouldn't show my address. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Really simple and easy. And if you've already created your profile and your address is showing, you can go in here and you can change it. It's under the info tab. Oh, I'll let it slide. Go ahead. I'm oh, sorry. I didn't hear you say anything. That's okay. Well, so, uh, but, but you still show up on the map, like the. It doesn't show the address, but it'll say if someone's looking in this area. You'll still show up. 
great question. You will still show up in that region. And what you do too is you say, hey, when I have a certain do you guys have the same question? Exactly. We're right next to each other. We want the same question. I'm going to give you both five bucks after this. <laughs> so the thing is, when you create a service region, you can say, hey, certain amount of miles from my address, or you can choose zip codes or towns or states. You actually can go a service radius as much as 620 miles. Asinine number, don't know why, but 620. Now, a good thing to, to make note of here, too, are any of you e-commerce businesses? So you're simply online. Okay, do you have any physical presence, Jen? Jen? Jane. Jane, sorry. Do you have any physical location? Do you sell anywhere around the area, or is it all online? Okay, you're going to pick up some stuff today, but Google My Business specifically is going to be if you're a physical location or service-based area. Okay, well, you can, yep, so you can work with them to get make sure their Google My Business is up and running. There you go. Is it, is it clear how you get to this market radius? Um, yes, it is. It is because you choose your service radius and then you can choose miles, zip codes, towns, and, and you just type in the number. Now, here is the category, right? You are allowed up to 10 categories for your Google My Business profile. Do not do 10 categories. <laughs> Don't do it. What you should do is two to three if you have to. Your primary category is obviously the most important. And Google local search is based on relevance. So a great example, I'm down in Tampa, and there is a Chinese pizza place. <laughs> so either I'm in the mood for Chinese or pizza, I don't know, right? <laughs> Wonton pizza, I don't know. But the thing here is, are they going to do a primary category of Chinese or pizza? And that's going to make a difference, because if I'm searching for Chinese food, they'll show up for Chinese. If they do pizza as a second category, then they'll show up below other people because it's their secondary category. Oh, and now I have to start over, guys. No worries. No, I love when people scramble for their phones. It's the best part. Don't worry. Is it an emergency? Good. Do you want me to talk to them? I'll give you a date pass. So the big thing here is... You want to choose your primary category. Now, you cannot create a custom category. These categories are set in stone in the system. They're changing, but they're already set. Because otherwise, we'd have categories for everything, like dog bakeries and all this other stuff for Chinese pizza. So what you want to do is choose the best category. You start typing in keywords, and it will show all the categories that make sense for you. My recommendation, two to three at max. Okay? If you can keep it to one, even better. But the more you dilute, the more you're not as relevant, if that makes sense. It looks like you're casting a wider net instead of being specific in niche. Does that make sense, guys? Okay. Now you pop in your phone number. For those of you that don't have a website, you would check right here on this box, create a free website. If you do have a website, you use your website URL. Again, if you already have a website, you don't want to use the Google My Business website tool. Doesn't make sense. It would be confusing. You'd have two different properties online, two things to manage. You don't want that. Only if you don't have a website would you check this box. You guys are going to be doing this all day, aren't you? Are you going to hate us? No. So does Google actually create a website? Can you do a website through Google? It's not like a WordPress website. It's a very simple one-page website, so which I'll show you. This is an interesting question. Because you want to stick, is it better, like say you have a Wix website, is it better to abandon the Wix website and go with this because it is Google and you're going all with Google, no. so that doesn't matter. No. no, no SEO bells and whistles there. No, I don't. I don't recommend that. Okay, then this screen basically what it's telling you is verify. Yes, sir. Excuse me, Brian. What's the tip to get a Google phone number? Because there seems to be a lot of spam on regular phones. That's. I'll talk to you offline about that. That doesn't have to do with with this presentation. Okay. So then the, let's save the questions, guys, so that I can get through it. So then the last, the last thing is here we're talking about verifying why you want to verify so that you can really take control of your profile, okay? Now, I told you usually you would get a postcard by mail. Not today. So for any of you that don't have a Google My Business profile verified, what you would do, you would get to this screen, and you click on verify later. You're going to want to write this down. <clears throat> this is where you're going to go in order to fill out a form that will expedite your verification. What that means is you're going to fill out a form saying, hey, this is my name, this is my business, 
Here's my Google email that I use to create the Google My Business profile. And it's going to send off to my team in Michigan. They're going to expedite the process for me. So they'll get it done within two to three business days. So that's going to be gybo.com, G-Y-B-O.com, slash verify my business. G-Y-B-O.com forward slash verify my business. And that's only if you haven't verified. If you have, don't worry about this. Did everybody get it that needs it? Yeah? Okay. Okay. So we went through what Google My Business is. Now do all of you understand what Google My Business is? Could you? Yep. So I'm doing my job a little bit. The next thing is why do we want to use it? So we talked about the idea of showing up in those micro moments, but what are the other things, the features, the bells and whistles that we get for using this? And why does it matter? We're going to look at that now. Have any of you seen this screen before on your mobile phone? Mm -hmm. So this is a Google My Business profile. This is what shows up when someone's in their moment of need. And over 50% of all internet users are using their phone. People are leaving the laptops and desktops. They might have a tablet, but throughout the day, guess what? This is now an appendage. How many of you feel naked if you lose this? <laughs> You're lost, right? It used to be your keys if you lost your keys. No, it's this. If you lose this, oh my goodness. I drive my daughter to preschool every day. One day I left this charging and I was having a conniption. I didn't know what was going on. And I know where I'm going, but it was just like, I don't have it. I think it's more so because in case you get into an accident, you want to have, you know, that, that phone. But at the same time, she's only five minutes away. But that whole 10 minute trip back and forth, I was freaking out that I didn't have my phone. And I think all of us are like that. Part of it, if you guys heard of Pavlov's dogs, Mm -hmm. Yeah, for those of you nodding your heads, thank you. Thank you for being, yes, this is why I love Massachusetts. Yes, sir, thank you. There's, everybody always nods their head. No one, no one ever shakes their head. Thank you. Pavlov's dogs, allow me to elaborate. Pavlov was a scientist. Here's what he did. He put out a plate of food, dog salivate. Second time, put out a plate of food, rang a bell. You've heard this now. Dog salivate. Third time, guess what he did? Ring the bell, dogs salivate. Guess what happens when this thing goes off? We salivate. There's a reward center in our head. Endorphins are released because somebody is connecting with us. That's the big thing. So when we are using this phone, this appendage, in order to find something so quickly, does anybody remember Microsoft Encarta? where you had to find the CD-ROM and pop it into your tower? <laughs> or you had to go to a library, Encyclopedia Britannica, to find something? Now it's, right? Now all of a sudden it's like, do, 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 done. So we're finding information that we need in a split second. That's why this is so important, because it's taking up all that space on the phone. You can't get past it. That's why we want to have a Google My Business profile. So you see the how it's broken up. The big things that I'll point out, obviously the ability to call you, that's huge. People still do call. Get directions if you're a physical business. Go to your website. Turns out, according to an Adweek research study, 81% of people will go to your website to figure out if they want to do business with you. Eight out of 10 people will look at your website before they even consider doing business with you. So you do have to have a good website. It should be mobile responsive. That's a big thing. What does that mean? Mobile responsive? Mobile responsive means if I'm on this laptop right here, that laptop, my phone, a tablet, it responds to the device. So it's a good experience. I don't have to scroll left and right. All I'm doing is scrolling up and down if I'm on a mobile phone. That's the big thing. So all the new uh, platforms that you build a website on, whether it's Wix, Weebly, Squarespace, WordPress, all of them now are, are mobile responsive templates. If you built your website, let's say even three or four years ago, it's probably out of whack a little bit and it might need to be reformatted. But that's what, mobile, does that make sense? Mobile responsive? Now the other thing, description. I'll tell you about description. You have up to 750 characters. 750 characters, use them. Pop in product names, pop in your business name again. Uh, services you offer, your business category, any keywords if you service certain towns. You want to be popping that into your description. 750 characters. This is rich content that you're popping in to your Google My Business profile that lives on Google. So that's your description. 
Now, what will happen is it gets truncated or cut off. It will say, see more. That's fine. You still want to pop in as much as you can into your description. Okay? Your address, obvious. Your hours are a big thing. We'll get to hours in a second, but you want to make sure your hours are correct. Any of you by appointment only? Okay. So I'll, I'll nip, nip this question in the bud. If you're by appointment only, what you want to do is you set your hours, your regular workday, and then in your description, you say by appointment only. Okay, there's no by appointment only hour setting. I get this a lot. I'd rather be proactive than someone would come by. Could you at the beginning of the description so they can see that? I would do it at the beginning of the description. And also, depending on your business category, you have the ability to put a, a scheduling link. So I use a tool called Calendly. If any of you are, need scheduling tools, this is me, Brian, not Google, but it's Calendly, C-A-L-E-N-D-L-Y, dot com. And that, it's, it's 10 bucks a month, and that allows people to actually schedule a time. It, it works with my calendar, doesn't show them what's on my calendar, but shows them openings. Really, really helpful. So Calendly.com. What does it show if you don't have your address? Mm -hmm. so, yep, it will just show the region or the town that you're in. That's it. Yeah. Great question. Now, the big thing is with listings and with your profile, you've got to make sure you fill out every single field. What this is doing is each field that you fill out, it's a signal that you're sending to Google saying, hey, this is my information. This is exactly what we're about. So you have, I showed you the description. Filling that up is big. I'm going to show you some other things like attributes that are big. But when you have a filled out, a fully populated profile, you're more reputable. Again, this is a first impression. Someone's looking you up. So that plumber, believe it or not, I looked at two plumbers when I had the monsoon in my kitchen. The other plumber, all lowercase, <coughs> I get it, all lowercase is fine, but then didn't respond to reviews, had four reviews, was at three stars, no responses, and didn't have any information filled out. The other guy had pictures, which I'm going to show you, had a description. So already I could tell that he was going to take better care of me. Does that make sense? Like it really felt like I was going to be brought in and he was, even though he's going to charge me some insane amount because it's off hours, I'm still going to do it. So does that also affect how Google um, treats you? Because I've heard this before where you brought this up earlier where you said to use the title to say, mm -hmm. but I've also heard reference to, you know, Google, show Google like you care about your business by being really thorough. So does that show up then? Uh, there's, so there's, there's no causation to it, right? I'm going to say that it is part of the algorithm that having a fully populated profile is going to help you show up higher. Definitely. And there are some other things that go into it. It's going to be a fully populated profile. It's going to be reviews and responding to those reviews, which we'll get into. It's going to be the idea that, um, that you have one of the big things, hours. Your hours are filled out. Questions and answers, which I, I'm going to cover. It's kind of a nugget that's not in this, but I'm going to tell you guys about it. And finally, photos. Okay, yeah, photos and videos, which I'll get it to. Street view versus like 360 street view versus just doing your own. Um, no, you don't. That's that's optional. Okay. It's optional, but I will talk about that. Thank you. So you guys see the proofs in the pudding here. You're going to be telling people that you care more about the experience. They're going to come work with you because you have a fully populated profile. I recommend this. All of you, I'm assuming, have, does anybody have a flip phone? No. I usually get one flip phone. Nobody has a Zach Morris phone, one of those big gray ones. <laughs> so if you have a smartphone, you can go into your market. You can go into the Google Market or the iOS App Store and download Google My Business. You just type in Google My Business. This allows you to control your Google My Business profile from your pocket. There's a lot of cool things that we're doing now. So on the app, not only can you edit your information, edit your description, you can create posts, which I'll show you in a second. You can upload photos and videos that you take on your phone. You can re reply to reviews. And now the big thing is we have this messaging feature. And I'll talk about messaging, but messaging means that instant gratification. If someone has a question, you're prompted right on your phone. You can answer the question with a prospect or lead and try to win their business right there instead of waiting for an email to come in through your contact form on your website, right? So 
Highly recommend this. All you do is you search for Google My Business, three words, and it'll pop up. Right. Who's that again? Sure. Uh, so on your App Store or your Google Play, Google My Business. That's it. And you'll download the app. And then you'll log in with your Google account. Oh, the app on your phone. And then it's, yeah, this is separate from like the Google Search app. This is another app that you're going to download. I mean, because. Sure. Google My Business. Three words. Yep. That's it. And you'll see this little shot icon right here. That's what you want to download. Now the other thing that we made available because sometimes you're on the go, you want to make it easy. You can actually search for your business on Google search and you can edit right through the search results page. So if you're logged into your Google account, you can actually edit your business info. You can create posts, which we'll talk about, add photos, which are very important and manage your reviews, meaning reply to your reviews all from the search engine results page. So you don't have to figure out, one of the things that people forget all the time, and I'm gonna tell you if you take notes, google.com slash business. That's how you get to the Google My Business dashboard. Google.com slash business. A lot of people forget that. It's actually one of the most searched terms when it comes to Google My Business. Google My Business login. People don't know how to log in. So it's google.com slash business. But if you forget that, just search for your business, make sure you're logged in, and you'll see this where you can start editing. Your info right there. Okay. Hours. Hours are very, very important. How many of you have ever gone to a business and it was closed? But it said it was open though, right? So I told you we spent some time down in Tampa. My son has allergies. My son Bryce has milk allergies, egg allergies, like it just it really stinks. So finding a restaurant to go to is very, very difficult. If you know anyone affected by allergies, it's really serious. So we found a vegan restaurant. It was 20 minutes away, but you know what? We figured no milk or eggs. We're going to be safe there. Well, at the same time, it's the Gasparilla Festival. Has anyone ever heard of Gasparilla? Gasparilla, now I was told by... Tampa people, I'm not supposed to say this because it's disparaging. Gasparilla is actually a festival where people dress up as pirates and just get drunk. <laughs> and so, so like, it's a huge thing for Tampa Bay. Buccaneers, all that stuff, right? I can say it up here. I'm safe. So people are dressed up like One-Eyed Willie from the Goonies, walking around, right? And they're all swerving on the street and everything. Well, I didn't know that this same day was Gasparilla. I'm driving and avoiding pirates just in the street. <laughs> my son's crying because he's hungry. My wife is telling me verbatim, I'm not talking to you, I'm too hungry. And my daughter's like, where are we? Where are we? Look at a pirate, a pirate. I'm like, oh, just get there. You know that dad code, like just get there. Get there and guess what? Oh. And you bet I'll never go back to that place. I marked it off. I said never again because if they set an expectation for me and they didn't deliver on it, I'm done. I had to drive through 20 minutes of pirates to get there. So, very, very important. Once you verify your profile, that you want to make sure you have your information. And this is where special hours come in, holiday hours. If you guys are closed on Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, you have different hours. You can go in there on the app and change your hours. You can add special hours. Really important. Because if you alienate, if you confuse them, you lose them, right? Posts. I want you to take note of this. Google My Business is giving you free real estate on search engine results page. Google is the number one traffic site in the world for people looking for stuff. So just wrap your mind around this. Someone's in that micro moment. They need a product or service that you have. Well, this is what's showing up on the right side of the page when they're in that micro moment. If you have an optimized Google My Business profile. Now, when you go to the website that I gave you at the beginning, I know I've given you a lot, but that briancaplin.com slash get found, I actually have a video on how to optimize your profile to make sure you fill everything out. That fully populated optimized profile gets you a better chance of showing up here. You're taking up one third of the screen on a desktop when someone's in a micro moment and needs your product or service, or you're making them actually scroll past your business, all of your information when they're in that micro moment. 
So this is why it's so important to capture that property. Now what we've done is we've created posts. Have any of you seen posts before or used them? Do you use them, sir? Every week. Every week. So tell me, okay, this is great. Do you get an email telling you that you need to put up a new post? And so, so is that a good experience for you? It, it prompts you, right? It gives you a little digital nudge. So the, the whole idea of posts, it's similar to social media, but it's different. Consider this a mini advertisement. This is a mini advertisement that has a shelf life. Yes. Does this tie in at all to Google Plus? Because I used to post no. Google Plus and I, thinking that I was putting content out there, but so this you, is totally unrelated. I knew I'd get one. Google Plus is being it's being yeah. shelved. It's saying sayonara. So Google Plus is totally different so from this. Merge, they they do not merge. YouTube doesn't merge with Google My Business, doesn't merge with Google Plus, doesn't merge with Gmail, all separate. So Google Plus. It's gone. It's being sunsetted, as we call it. Mm -hmm. So that was Google's attempt at social media that just didn't take off. This is here to stay because this is in the search engine results page. This is totally different. This is capturing people when they're in that moment. So a post is a mini advertisement that lives, has a shelf life of seven days. Seven days. How do we make sure it's seven days? Well, guess what? On the sixth day, you're going to get an email that's a nudge saying, Hey, it's time to put up a new post. And what we do is we archive your posts. We don't delete them, but we archive them. So now people will see, hey, there's no new post here, but there are archived posts. You can scroll. So now you can swipe to see your other posts. They still live. They're just kind of hidden, right? This is really important because you want to have fresh content. It's really important to have fresh content. A great example is when I lived in Brighton, I needed a chiropractor. <laughs> okay, the guy had put up testimonials from four years prior. Four years. What happened in those four years? Did he like start watching a bunch of Steven Seagal movies? <laughs> <laughs> what was it? So all of a sudden, I see stale content. I'm thinking, is this guy still around? Is he? Are the people leaving after they come in? Like, what's going on here? Well, this is where we want to have fresh content to show that we're up to date. We're always moving forward, right? There are different types of posts you can put up. Announcements. So announcements are going to be something where you're talking about, hey, we have, uh, maybe there's a snowstorm coming up, which you guys just had, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it might say, hey, we're, we're closed for the snowstorm. Be safe. That's an idea of an announcement. Events. Great example for the Enterprise Center is on each of their events, they can actually put up an event post. They can put up the date, the time, information, a picture or video, and a link to register for the event. So you can add a link to each of these posts. So now from your mini advertisement on Google My Business, you have another link where you can send them somewhere to do something. Yes? They prompt you, yep. So at the top, it will show you one of these icons. You can choose which one you want to do. Products, if you're selling products, pop up a photo of the product with a link to it. You can put in the price, a description. Business info is very much like announcements. It's really, you're going to see an announcement you can put in like, we've moved, it's something that has to do, we have a new employee, something like that. And finally, offers. This is a big one that a lot of people are taking advantage of. They used to have it, they took it away, now it's back. So offers, this is a great way, put it out there, people show your phone, now you have anecdotal proof, or actually direct proof, that people are using your coupons. So you can pop in the offer, you can set a time limit, people can redeem it online or show it to you physically. Yes? When you said you can do a link to register for an event, does Google have a, a registration? So like if you use Eventbrite or one of those, you can link to a third party site. And on any of these, on the announcement, I could, I could highlight a blog post that I did and link to my blog post or a video on YouTube. Now the other thing is posts aren't just photos, they're also videos. So you can pop up a 30 second video to highlight something. How long has this been there? <laughs> Almost a year. Okay. Maybe more, actually more, depends. They rolled it out differently. Some people have had it for two years. You've got to realize with a tech company, they're going to roll it out to certain people, and, but it's been there for a while. Yeah, that's that's why I'm here. Yeah, to make sure that you know. So the post number one, I would say download the app. Okay. 
but also you can go to your Google My Business dashboard. The app is your best friend. It, right there when you open the app, there's a blue plus button, and it says, do you want to upload a photo or create a new post? Great question. Does this make sense for posts? Yeah, free mini advertisement. So, something different. I just told you in posts you can upload photos and videos. You can. But I want you to consider this too. This is under the Photos tab within Google My Business. Or on the app, you can just upload a photo. This is a photo that lives in perpetuity. So imagine you're going over to a relative's house and looking at a photo album from the past. This is like what you're doing for your clients. And people are vicariously living through you by looking at photos and videos. Right? They want to know, like, and trust you. This is how they do it. So you have a cover photo, which is very similar to any social media. It's going to be, you know, a rectangle. You have your profile pic, which is going to be a square. That's usually your logo or your, your brand mark. Then you're going to have some other photos. Now, what I recommend for photos, if you guys are just creating your Google My Business profile, five photos to start. Five photos taken from your phone. Not stock photos. What do I care about stock photos? I want to get to know you, right? If I'm in a moment of need, I'm looking at you. So if you are a retail business, then show me your products. Show me your staff. If you're a service-based business, of course, show me your staff. I want to know the people that I'm working with. Show me befores and afters, your service fleet, you know, just stuff that you see around town, whatever it is. But basically introduce me, personalize and humanize your business. Right, because I'm buying from a person, not a, not a brand. Very, very important. So at least five photos. Now, you can also put up videos. Videos are very impactful. Listen, by 2021, over 80% of all internet traffic is going to be video. If you guys aren't on the video train yet, start practicing. I'll have the mode to do it. I see cell phones all over the place. percent. According to Cisco, it's going to be 81% percent of all internet traffic 2021 2021 yes what about panorama pictures panoramic pictures you can put up they're not going to be as easy to it depends on what your business is you can put them up i'd say more so you're better off with a square photo or the rectangular standard photo but great question panoramic is more so going to be for like social media <clears throat> for the other companies which i can't mention that i'm staring at right now the F word, as we call it. <laughs> okay. So stock photos are photos that you haven't taken, right? Now, there are sites that you can use stock photos. One thing that I recommend, Google Images to grab images for your business. What you want to do, I'm going to give you two stock sites that are not in this presentation. One of them is Pexels, P-E-X-E-L-S dot com. Pexels, P-E-X-E-L-S dot com. Those are free, commercial, royalty-free photos that you can use, taken from different photographers, artists. They're, the attribution or mentioning of the artist is voluntary. You don't have to do it. If you want to, like if you're sending out a newsletter or something, it's nice to mention them and link back. The other one is Unsplash, U-N-S-P-L-A-S-H dot com. I feel like I'm at a spelling bee. U N S P L A S H dot com. What is the origin? Yes. Yeah. Is it possible to have too many photographs? Back? No, great question. So the question is, is it possible to have too many photographs? No. Or videos? No, no, because this is more and more content that you're feeding to. You can't lose, right? So the more content you have, the better. Can you keyword title the photos? You can add captions to the photos, but to another good question, what you do, so you take a photo on your phone, right? You're going to save it to your computer. You know how when you save the photo to your computer, it's IMG underscore whatever? Change that. Change that file name on your computer. So what you would do is instead of IMG underscore da 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 da, you're going to do your business name. My dash business dash name dash Salem dash mass and upload that. What you're doing is you're popping the keywords into the file name. That file is being uploaded to the web. Now Google has an idea of what that file has. And it's connected to your Google My Business profile, which is connected to your business, circle of life. You get it. Okay, great question. Yes. Does the photo have to be in the place of business? 
it's recommended that it's in the place of business or it has to do with the business. So random pictures of like family and stuff doesn't make sense. So think about it too. The terms of service say yes. Think about it too. There's no, there's no police that are really going through your photos unless they're very questionable. What is a potential customer in a micro moment going to want to see? That's it. So if you do retreats and stuff and it's not in the place of business, obviously that's fine. Does that answer your question? So we want to make sure we have at least five photos and one video. A video can be up to, really it can be over a minute. It compresses. Uh, a really long video you're going to be kind of hard fought to put up. 30 seconds to a minute. Because this isn't like YouTube. YouTube is actually, you should be doing five to seven minute videos to capture their attention and get them going. Google My Business, 30 seconds to a minute so they can get to know your business a little better. And every month, try to add on a couple photos, another video. Keep adding on content so you really can't add too much. Yes? Um, when you add a photo, is it bringing it up to the front in your old stuff, or do you have to take down your old stuff? You keep your old stuff up, unless it's outdated and it's misrepresented with the brand. And then you add the new stuff, it'll show up. You'll also be able to see, as we get into insights and metrics, you'll be able to see which photos are getting the most love. So a great example, do any of you ever watch the show The Profit with Marcus Limonis? Right? Did you see Corey's Bagel Deli? Yes. So he's actually one of my clients. He's fanboy. Fanboys. Okay. So the show is on CNBC. I really recommend watching it. If you have time, it's on Hulu and, and CNBC. The Profit with Marcus Limonis. Great show. The guy owns Camping World, which is RVs, but he goes in and invests in businesses gives them advice and helps them build up. It's similar to the concepts you guys see, bar rescue, kitchen nightmares, that kind of stuff. Well, Corey's Bagel Deli was one of the first episodes of season. On my YouTube channel, I made a video tearing down Corey's marketing and saying, how could Marcus Limonis, this multimillionaire, invest in this business? It was nice, but I said the website's off, the email marketing, all this stuff. Corey's now one of my clients as a result. So it shows you the power of video right there. But Here's the thing. Corey didn't know that he had a Google My Business profile. So I set him up with his Google My Business profiles. He owns bagel shops in Chicago, three of them. Now he saw that one of his bagel sandwiches got over 70,000 views. 70,000 on a bagel sandwich. <laughs> you had to hear the expletives when I showed him that. He's like, you gotta be kidding me. So it was, it was an amazing thing because now he's getting all this information about what he should be showing, what's getting the love, and he's putting that more into social, into his emails, all that stuff. So that's where you want to be putting up the photos to test and see what's really working with your audience. Yes? The video, videos, um, I've been hearing that all the rage now is they should be vertical, not horizontal, but then up to the you. format looks horizontal. It's horizontal, but it will, it will blur out the side, so it's up to you. Mm -hmm. On this because of social media, because of Instagram and such, yes. But it all depends. If you're taking a, a portrait video, that's fine. If you're taking a landscape video, it's it's really up to you. What I'd say is be consistent. Don't keep switching it back and forth. Sure. No, you can you can post manually through Google My Business, but if you're using an automated tool like a Hootsuite, the one that's working right now is called Social Pilot. Oh. That's that's the one that's integrated. Yep, that's the one that that I've used. Um, what I recommend though is actually going into Google My Business and updating the posts yourself <clears throat> instead of scheduling it out because. If you if you do the wrong skill set in for if there's something timely that they put up. So we talked about um, the scheduling link. The other thing is if you're using certain scheduling tools, you can actually sync them up with your Google My Business profile. So in this case, you could be using a tool like Acuity Scheduling or other ones. Once you're in your Google My Business dashboard, you would click on the schedule.